going on, guys? It's the 75th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. After a week off, we hope that, you know, we, we hope you've missed us. Um, if you haven't, it's fine, I understand. Uh, but we're back. And I believe, Jamie, that these right here are the, are, the, are the Chronicles of Beyond Extinction. Oh, yeah, they are, boys. Wonderful. Well, let's get started. Hey, Hey, honey bunny, it's Rivka Reyes. This is Ron Wasserman, the nut that wrote Go Go Power Rangers. It's Boba Fett here. This is Molly Rennick from Living Dead Girl. It's WWE superstar legend, Davy Boy Smith's daughter, Georgia Smith. Hi, I'm Jude, I play guitar. Hi, my name is Zach, I play... Hi, I'm Mile, I play drums in Beyond the Extinction. And you're what? Chronicles of Pog with Tom and Jamie. So the older you get, the cooler you get. There's nothing worse than wet socks. Nothing yes. worse. Nothing worse than I mean, there's probably a lot of things worse. It's like dying. Oh, I'm sensing something in the room. Yes, it's your bullshit, Derek. Shut the fuck up. Hello, everybody. We are back for the 75th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. And dee 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 dee. are the Chronicles of Beyond Extinction. It is I, the bearded Brummy Jamie, and joining me, as always, as always, is this handsome bugger right here. Good from Tom. For those of you, I imagine, because the microphone, I don't think the microphone picked it up properly, uh, that, was the, that was the American National Anthem, wasn't it? It was. I was going to go through yeah. with this week's band, and then I couldn't quite work out how to do a deaf core these in a high-pitched tone. Well, well, well yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I think it would be. It's all right. Would have been. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd imagine. I'd imagine it. Yes, of course. Uh, you are obviously in reference to the fact that we are off last week uh, yes. because I was in the old US of A. Um, Indeed, worse, sir. Cracking week. Cracking week, Jamie. I didn't want to come home. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not surprised. It was one of those, it was really surreal. The most surrealist thing, I think, was um, obviously taking off at 9am for about a seven and a half to eight hour flight and landing at midday was yeah. the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's, you know, because my watch, because there's obviously no internet in the sky, um, yeah. my watch was at like 5pm. UK time, and as soon as the wheels touched the ground, it was like midday. It's like, oh wait, hang on, wait, <laughs> but hang on, I've just have I have I gone back in time, or is what what's going on here? Um, time travel. It was so weird, dude. So when we got to Monday Night Raw the Monday night, like we'd been awake by the time I'd finished, we'd been awake for twenty five hours. Oh, excuse me. So it was. It was pretty brutal. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty brutal. So like we got we adapted to American time and now we're back. We're like knackered all the <laughs> just absolutely knackered. It was like I think it was about 4 p.m. yesterday to watch a TV and I was like, oh, 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 what's going on? It's so odd. But I, but it was weird because I like woke up at I think it was like six or seven a.m. yesterday, and today I woke up at half eleven in the morning. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> It was weird because you were away and I was like, oh, I need to text Tom. I was like, I can't. It's actually like three in the morning there. I'll wait till later. <laughs> I know you could then because obviously I turn my notifications off between midnight and seven. So yeah, no, it's just built into me to not send messages in the middle of the night. And it was just, yeah, it was just a weird moment. I was like, ah, oh, shit, he's not awake yet. Why haven't you seen this? Uh, because he's asleep. It's still in the morning, middle of the night. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> Waking up to like 84 messages. Like, what the shit? <laughs> um, but obviously most of it was work. But <laughs> But yeah, it was just nuts, man. It was uh, it was the greatest time. It was the fucking greatest time. Um, I had so much fun. And obviously met former guest Norm McNeil on the last night um yeah. for dinner and we shared a dessert. That was kind of cute. Um all we three of us. Dessert with Bear. Oh, yeah, and Keris, of course. Um yeah, we had a fudge brownie between us. It was really nice. Um uh yeah, it was it was incredible, man. It was a really it felt like we do it all the time. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah, it was just odd. It was great. I, I loved every second. It was so nice to see him and meet him in person and just like chat for three odd hours. Um, then we walked into a subway and he left. 
Um, yeah, it was, dude, just, it, it was incredible, man. Like, obviously, I posted some photos earlier today on the old socials for people that, so that's not even, like, a quarter of the photos that we I took. I can only imagine. It but, was just gone. I was going to say, as you were in America, did you get any, oh, my God, is that a British accent? No. Ah! Oh. I did, however, I bought myself some Air Jordans as a treat. So... Very, oh my god, that's so comfortable. 130 bucks from Champs in Times Square. And uh, it was so funny because when we went to buy them, the lady, the cashier was like, so where are y'all from? And uh, I was just like, oh, from Wales. And she went, oh. <laughs> As if to say, the fuck is that? I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh, it's next to England. She's like, oh, right near London? I'm like, no. <laughs> At that other side. That's it. Americans are London, and that's it. Pretty much. Well, though, if you compare how far things away from in America and they count it as nothing, it probably is right next to London for them in their travels, the way they work things out. I remember getting mistaken for an Australian. That was great. <laughs> Still don't that get a, that. How, how does that even that happen? Was, <laughs> that was so much fun. Um, but, Jamie, while I was away, I had a thought, which was, do you feel like Uber Eats is the DFS of the food delivery service? <laughs> what? <laughs> because I get emails probably two, three times, four times a week. Be like, okay. you've not, you've not used your discount yet. You've not used your discount yet. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you've not used your discount yet. <laughs> Could you imagine if DFS had done that? You haven't brought a sofa today. You didn't yeah. buy it. You didn't buy a sofa yesterday. Would you like to buy one today? <laughs> What's really funny is the email says it ends soon. But I get them every week, and I've got them every week about four months. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ending soon. Yeah, it's ending soon. Make sure you use a discount. Bye, Tom. You haven't used your discount yet. I know we mailed, mailed you two years ago, but you still haven't used it. Use it. I well, can guarantee when you want to use a discount code, that's when you don't have one. That always yeah. happens to me. It's or it's expired. Annoying. Yeah, every time. When I go to order, we're like, oh, we got that discount code, find it. Expired yesterday. Motherfucker. Maybe it used in Bahrain. What? <laughs> I, I, it's just some random T's and C's on there. There really is. I, I was like, you think it's like, hi, I have this discount code. Oh, great. Look at eligible restaurants for it. Oh, so I can order from this one place. Yeah, right. Norwich. The shit. Um, <laughs> I found that Specsavers used to do this thing on their website. So something called No CT Scan, where it takes photos behind your eyes, etc. And on the website, it'd be like, here's a £10 voucher. But it wasn't a voucher. It was just telling you that it was 10 quid for the scan, because it's 10 quid anyway. And I was like, oh, I've got this, I've got this voucher. They're like, that's not a voucher. But yeah, it, it's like, it definitely isn't. It's just telling you it's a tenner. So we then had to make out that it was more expensive normally. <laughs> oh, yeah, for a tenner. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you just bare awesome. face lied to them. Yeah, that's obviously the marketing ploy, isn't it? Just lie to them. Just tell them it's 30 quid normally. Fuck it. <laughs> but do they do it at the eye test? I bet they do it at the eye test as well, don't they? You always what get you £10 pound eye test at Specsavers. Do you? God, we used to get them all the time. Here's a voucher. You haven't had an eye test in a while. Have one for £10. Pound. Oh, we never got that. We never did it in Cardiff. Oh. It's they're, they're, not, um, they're not linked to they. They're not linked to their franchise, so they're owned by different people. So it's obviously whatever they want to uh, do in that, sort, but... in that area. Birmingham likes a £10 eye test, clearly. It just wasn't poor, a city. So... <laughs> <laughs> Second sale, I am let me know. I am joking. I am joking. Um, so what else I found really weird? So, obviously, whilst I was in New York City, um, I found it really weird that you can buy merch for the public services, but not here. Hold on, what? So you can get, like, NYPD, like, hoodies and shirts and... F, like <laughs> FDNY, like fire department and stuff like that, you can just buy police that's and... so uh, weird. Not the uniform, obviously, no. but I mean, you can just buy merch that's like got their logo on and stuff, and you're like, that's odd. <laughs> it's <laughs> what? very odd. Yeah, it's because you might as well walk around here with like a paramedic jacket on, like, oh, man, I've lost my leg. I'm not real paramedic, sorry. I just like the jacket. <laughs> what brand are you wearing? <laughs> NHS. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like you doing with your fake firefighter shit. Hey, not fake. I'm a real firefighter. I can press a button. I still don't know why we have to wear a firefighter outfit to press a button. It's the shittest cosplay ever, but it's great. 
Okay. Is it because of the helicopter propellers? So that's why we wear a helmet. This. It's because if it does, the helicopter does crash and there is flames, you're going to get burned. You're pretty close to it. But it just feels weird. You've got to dress up like a firefighter to literally stand there and press a button. That is all we can do. We can't yeah, tackle the fire. Just but you've just explained that it's to protect you. Yeah, but that, that, I just thought of that on the spot, to be honest. I might not. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's too fair, though. It's quite logical. So yeah, it makes it, sense. Yeah. See, I am logical. I ain't as stupid and poor. Right? I never, never I did say you were stupid. Well, that myself, I did. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of really randomly was... Who decided, there's probably a real logical explanation for this and a scientific one that's been explained, but I just thought for the fun and shits and gigs of it, I'd just bring it up anyway. Who got lazy and went, yeah, January can have 31 days, yeah, March, yeah, perfect. February, I can't be fucking arsed. Give it 28. <laughs> I do what, I can't be fucked those last three days. Apart from when we get to, every four years, we'll give them a throw. We'll throw them a cheeky extra. One. It's such a we'll random. A it's just such a random thing to do. June, you know what? Give some thirty-one, but give some thirty. I just can't be fucking ass <laughs> to give them thirty-one. It'd be a bit weird if we had thirty-one days every single month. It's a bit long, isn't it? People want to get paid properly. Um, yeah, I don't get that. What is it that? <laughs> what? There's got to be a reason for it, let's be honest. The more, oh, like, probably something to do with fucking farming back in the day or something. But the sun's got a bit slower. Give February an extra day. <laughs> but I only do it every four years. It only slows down every four years. So give it an extra day. <laughs> We're feeling a little bit sorry for it. Give it another one. Go on. <laughs> How are you anyway, Jane? How have you been? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, my weekend, my my time away has not been as exciting as yours, obviously, because you know I stayed in Birmingham. I didn't go to another country, but I did go to a gig, so that was amazing. I, I uh, finally got to cash in my Christmas present, and I went to see Youngblood, and fuck me, it was good. Like I, I, I can see by that face you're not a fan, but I I like his music. I was a fan of his music, but it was something about him. I find him really captivating, and. Honestly, it was one of the best experiences of going to a gig I've ever seen or had in my entire life. That man can just... He had the entire crowd eating out of his hands by doing nothing, just singing his songs. But the whole crowd, everyone there just resonates with him and the things he says is bonkers. I've never known anything like it. I don't even know how to describe it. It was absolutely amazing. And was, it like, all the, was it all the 16-year-olds that were loving it? Is that what it was? That's the thing. That's what me and, me and my mate Matt... Cause Becky's been really ill, so she didn't come with me in the end. I went with my mate, Matt. And we were on the way there, and we are like, oh, God, we're going to feel so fucking old when we get here, aren't we? You know, turned, there was people in their 50s, in their 60s, on their own, not bringing their kids with them, actually just there to enjoy it. There was a wide variety of ages. It was nuts, and everyone was so into it. It was, oh, it was absolutely amazing. Like, I've never seen anyone just have a crowd. So I kept saying to someone, he's like, He's like the voice of this generation that's coming up now. I'd like the music is not the same, but it's punk. It has that mentality of it of no, we are the youth. This is what we believe in. Fuck the government. Fuck everyone else. This is what we want, and this is how we're going to live our life. He did an amazing speech at the end of it, all about trans rights. Fuck the Tories. He got the entire crowd chanted "fuck Sunak," and it was just everyone was into it. It was nuts. Like, I actually think he could have gone, come on, everybody, drink the Kool-Aid, and they would have done it. Like, <laughs> it's... Oh, it was absolutely bonkers. Honestly, one of the best gigs I've ever been to, and I didn't expect it when I went there. I was just like, oh, this will be fun. I quite like Youngblood. Didn't expect to walk out, just been, like, absolutely baffled by it. Me and my Matt, Matt, we had goosebumps, the things he was saying, like, the reactions he was getting to it. Yeah, it's... If anyone has chance to go see him on this tour, I know he's right, go, because it is phenomenal. And I got to see Netbeep, who supported. I'd never heard of them. I'd never heard them before. Heard of them. I knew they were like pop punk, generic pop punk. They're fun. They're like really fun. I enjoyed watching them. I don't know if you've heard them before, but did, uh, did they play All in Bloom? Uh, possibly. I didn't really know. Which any of the the best song that they've ever done. Uh, probably. So they probably that in December. Done, they did that do December. December. That one stood out because I really liked that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they did. They did it with Mark Hoppus as well. That's the better version than the original. Um, and Gold Steps is a song I quite like by them as well from their, their first album, I think it is. Uh, I'm not a massive fan, but all in I think in Bloom, I think it's called. It's like my favorite. It's my favorite song they've ever done. Uh, it's just really catchy. It was really, they were really good. I really just it was like we're from Wrexham. I was like, well, I didn't expect that, but there we are. 
<laughs> but yeah, that was absolutely amazing. Like, really good time. Really enjoyed it. But I know what you really want to know, Tom. I know what you've been wondering. Well, you've been sat in there in New York and you know, the time of your life, you've been thinking to yourself, I wonder how Jamie's getting on with 24. And I tell you, so Tom? I'm on season six, episode 21. What? I've fucking hell. Alone through this series. And. <sighs> I want not blown away by it. It's, not it's, it's the week. It's the weakest season. It's the weakest. But it, the story, the main story of they've got these new suitcase bombs and all this stuff. The Russians and they don't. I love the fact they don't actually say what country fired from. It's just the Middle East guys. They never. They never do. Yeah. They never say what. Yeah. Which I, I respect to be honest. Fair play. That story is great. Why is there so many subplots? Like Jesus, could there's so many. Yeah. Like, them two guys in the White House trying to kill the president. And then there's this, and there's the vice president's having an affair. And the vice president tried to nuke the, nuke this other country. And I was like, oh my God, I can't keep up. There's so many fucking subplots. Were you happy with the president? I was I didn't expect it at all. I was like, what the fuck is, what, why are you here? <laughs> You're not your West. brother. But, and how did you go from writing your brother's memoirs to being president within two years? That's weird. But, but no, I've really, I, I mean, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Obviously, I'm at the minute now where suddenly the Chinese are here. I was like, what? What? Just fill the whole series with the one story like you did before. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying it, but it's just weird. It's fine. Just let it be what it is, right? Yeah. Because you're about to hit another another unbelievable sit. So basically, what happened after six, the ratings dropped massively, and everyone went fuck. We're losing people. So seven is back to being fucking insane. Like five is. Good. That's why I said so five and seven are my favourite two series ever. Because seven, I'm excited as fuck to hear what you have to say after the first episode. <laughs> but season six has given me another character that I very much love. Morris. Oh, I love Morris. His sarcasm is wonderful. His sarcasm, his accent, it's just everything about him. I love him so much. Just like, don't worry, darling. I, just, I love him. He's amazing. And his close husband, which makes it even better. Yeah, absolutely amazing. He's great. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I've, don't get me wrong, I've not once had an episode finish and gone, that ah, shit. I've enjoyed every episode. It's just uh, so many subplots. It's, Annoying me. Yeah, six, six, six is the weakest series. Um, so <laughs> yeah. get through the next four episodes and then. Why is Audrey catatonic now? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, weird, but enjoyed it. Enjoyed it, just weird. I feel like I'm sounding like I'm not enjoying it, but I am honest. Well, good. <laughs> I'm pleased. I'm pleased to hear it. As we all know, uh, I was in the old New York City last last week as in the US of A. Um, and then Monday, so Monday we landed, we got to the hotel, and then went to Brooklyn Bridge for sunset. Incredible, saw the Statue of Liberty in in the distance as well. So we were like, "Well, we've done that. We don't worry. I'm going on the ferry. We can't be fucked." I was like, "So there's the Statue of Liberty. Click. Cheers. Then see you later. Bye, everyone." Um, what what I find really annoying in America is there's so many people be like, do you want to buy this? Do you want to come to this? Do you want to buy that? Do you want to buy that? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Why do you come here? Why do you come to me? A lot of them are scammers. Um, anyway, um, mainly in Times Square. So in Times Square, you just have to walk. Just just walk. Just don't yeah. don't look at anyone, boys. Don't look at anybody at all. Um, I'm the next biggest rapper, don't you know? Yeah, bollocks, are you? Um, <laughs> so, and then they try and sell you CDs for 40 bucks. It's like, CDs? Oh, really? CDs for CD? Yeah, and then they hound you and everything. They circle you and everything like bricks. Just give me a Spotify um, link, mate. Luckily, it never happened to us. Um, <laughs> sorry, because literally, since I was like, fuck oh, off. And they're like, okay. <laughs> um, and guys just like, you don't have to be so mean, you know? I'm like, e no, I will. I, if I don't want somebody around me, I will let them know I don't want them around me. Um, uh, so Monday, obviously, went to Brooklyn Bridge, then went to Monday Night Raw. Fucking amazing at the Barclays Centre. That was a massive highlight straight away. <laughs> first big night but well, like I said I've been away for 25 hours and we had to get the, sub we had to get the subway back because we were so far out um, and there was this like just just some weird some weird characters it was safe enough it was fine there's some weird characters on there um, <sighs> there's a homeless guy he was obviously off his face drunk passed out but he had his hand his jacket like that 
It's like, what are you concealing? <laughs> um, probably a bottle, but it could have been a gun. Who knows? Tuesday, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a nice quick rundown. Just, you know, otherwise we're going to be here for fucking hours. Like, welcome to the longest show of all time. Well, they've released it and they're still talking. What's going on? Um, <laughs> Tuesday, um, brother, oh yes, Tuesday we got, we got up really early every day. It's Andrew's Diner because it's been recommended. Oh my god, Jamie, unreal. There's nothing more amazing as well than going to an American diner because NFLs and all the time. They literally just had ESPN, and I was like, this is fantastic. This. <laughs> All the coffee I could drink. Oh, of course. All the coffee I could drink. Yeah, yeah. and just, just blueberry pancakes, but they were like three and they were huge and they had syrup. Comes in like little packets. So we get ketchup and mayonnaise at like McDonald's yes. and stuff. Yeah, there's syrup. I was like, more syrup, please. More syrup, please. <laughs> Lovely, jubbly. <laughs> Um, so we had Andrews and we went walking. Um, I can't remember where we went Tuesday, but we went for a we had a pedi, a pedicab tour. At uh, at one p.m. Yeah, half twelve. It's a pedicab. It's a pedicab. It's literally someone that cycles, and you have a big little cab behind oh, the two to sit on. No, and we did that for for Central Park. Oh, uh, nice. Central Park attractions. They're called. We had Barry, legend of the highest order, just the funniest, most knowledgeable, interesting person I've ever spoken to in my life. Um, and he kept making black jokes. He's a black guy, and he kept being like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, oh. Um, how many sisters, brothers and sisters do you have to perish? like, oh, I've only got the one sister, you know, small family, etc. And he turned to me and I was like, well, I've got seven brothers and sisters. And then there's all our nephews and nieces. And he went, my God, Tom, is your dad black? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of kids out there. We have so many. <laughs> hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um, but he shows where John Lennon got shot. He showed oh, wow. us um, the most expensive buildings in New York City. There was like um, an apartment that some lady, she's passed away now, had kept and signed over to a dog, and it's worth like two hundred thirty-eight million dollars. And it's like it has to be in benefit of the dog and everything. Like they can't just like splash what? their money around. Mental, like mental. <laughs> That's a way to go out in the world if you've got money. I'm not donating it to anyone or giving it to anyone. Yeah. It's the dogs. Yeah, and and it's I think in the will it says if any money is to be spent it must be in benefit of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Legend, fucking incredible. Um, and then we went to see the Arconia, uh, also yes. known as the Belmont Hotel, for only murders in the building. Um, but straight away we we're not allowed in, and I was like, for yeah. fuck's sake! So we got photos from the from the doorway. Um, sounds a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Um. Wednesday, we went to NBC Studios where Jimmy Fallon is filmed to get tickets. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we couldn't hang around because we had to go to the summit for 10 a.m. And they're open at 10 a.m. So like, shit. Ah. Yeah. Uh, never mind. It is what it is. We, went, we walked on NBC Studios for a bit, which is really cool. It does like merch and stuff. And you can have tours and everything of NBC. Oh, and cool. it was round, it's literally next to Radio City. Um, uh, yeah, very sick musical. I saw that. And you picked yeah. Excuse me, sorry, I got a bad cough. Um, so we so went to NBC, saw Radio City, and then we went, where did we go after that? Oh, to the summit, which is where I took all the photos of the skyline and everything from Empire mm. State. And, I, I put that map, and then there's that video of me with the clouds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that video is amazing. <laughs> that was absolutely nuts. It's so great up there, though. But it's funny because it was like six rooms, that two rooms each floor. But I don't think people really knew that because we didn't know that because everybody stayed in the first floor in the first room for fucking ages taking shit loads of photos because we took loads of photos and i was like oh is this it is this all it is I was like, that's a bit weird for 30 dollars whatever it was per person so it's a bit expensive for one room walked out into a room which full of loads of helium balls i was like oh this is cool <laughs> they're like balls all across the ceiling and balls all across the floor that's so awesome. obviously there were kids and they're just like booting them at people and that sort of thing going, of like loving it but it was great. And I tried to do a Paris to do a boomerang right through a ball in the air to recatch it, but we didn't get it to work. And one of me like, <laughs> like I'm talk like I'm talking now, but I'm just holding the ball. It's really funny. Um <laughs> so that was great. So we got all the skyline. And then we saw the Sex and City apartment, the friends apartment. Um and fuck. Did other things. We did other things on Wednesday. My brain Ghostbusters. So Ghostbusters, so much happened. I was just like, uh <laughs> Yeah, and we saw the Ghostbusters hook and ladder um, fire department where I bought your t-shirt from, which is oh, so should be to get that. 
this is recorded on Monday, so this will be with you tomorrow, but you would have already had it for three days by the time you receive it. So you're very, very welcome. Very welcome. The last one as well. Um, so we saw Hook and Ladder 8. We went back. Um, where did we? I don't know if we went for did. Oh, we got like a... Oh, no. Oh, for Tuesday. I forgot about words Broadway. What's Chicago? <laughs> Fuck, you forget that. Went on, went on board. Went saw Chicago. Keris was in her, in her element. But everyone went mental for this... For this um, Drag queen, Jinx Monsoon, winner of RuPaul's Drag Race season five. And like, oh, okay. I'm not going to lie, hilarious, like so funny. Because um, I was not sure what to expect. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, there was a bit where they were singing about class or something. And like, they went really quiet, and then out of nowhere, they just went, Jesus Christ, and it made me really piss myself <laughs> off him because the way it was delivered was great, but it also scared the shit out of the person that was singing alongside, <laughs> and it was absolutely hilarious. Great, though. That, that was, that was, I mean, I got a big fucking raised pizza. The pizza slices are, like, huge. Oh. You have to hold it and fold it in half to eat. Incredible. Ooh. Um, yeah, we did so much, man. We, just, we went to Chelsea Market on Thursday, went to HBO Studios, and got picked out of HBO Studios because I thought, like, and I thought, like, NBC. Yeah. So he was at HBO, and a guy went, Can I help you, sir? And I was like, Oh, yeah, I suppose have a little look around. He goes, Lovely. You can look around from outside. See you later. <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, Thanks, prick. <laughs> yeah, Americans are in it. <laughs> you can look around. So they get that, they get that little security badge. They get a fucking. They think they've got a honker, aren't they? Like a fucking ten incher. Um, <laughs> so I was just like, no, I'm good. And just we just left. So <laughs> I got to see a big fuck off Last of Us sign there. So I was like, oh, I guess that's cool. Um, saw CBS Studios. We saw. You know how they have the news people, but it's by the windows, and yeah. they're like doing their show with the wind. We saw some of those as well, <laughs> like ABC Seven, so the window like. <laughs> <laughs> it was great it's going to be a really long intro I'm so sorry guys um, there was a moment as well on the very first day that NBC were filming in Times Square and there was security everywhere they were doing like Valentine's because it's Valentine's so they were doing the Valentine's stuff of course. and um, the security guard had a Steelers hat and Steelers gloves on and he went hey man stay cosy yeah and I was like apps are bloody loot they say he's a global.com he's a chronicle so still get 10% off <laughs> And I noticed that he had sealers gloves on the hat, and I was like, and I see this as well. So I fist bumped him. This NYPD security guy. I was like, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, and then Friday, we did a load of shopping, just getting ready to go home, really. But when we got to the airport, Jamie, they'd oversold the flight by 20 people. How is that? Which easy? meant they had, well, because profit, isn't it? That's all they care about. Oh, we've accidentally oversold the flight. Shit. So. They were like, we're offering $1,000 per person, 20 people, mind, to volunteer to come off the plane. Nobody moved. So it's like, as the evening went on, because I was there going, I'm going fucking home, I don't give a shit. I'm going fucking, I'm not staying here, I'm going home. It got to the point where it got to three people left, and they were offering 4,500 bucks. And me and Karis were like, should we? Should we? <laughs> it's like, that's nine grand. Like, we only came here with two. <laughs> should we... You know, should we should we take nine? Oh, we'll take nine. But obviously, I know. Oh no, I, I do. I do regret it now. But it's just one of those things. Isn't it? I'm not joking. Though. We were desperate when we got back. We we're like, oh, thank God, home. It, the re- the real time. Because <laughs> obviously, we gained five hours again. So that we left at eight. Well, we left at eight forty due to delays, and um, it was like a six hour flight or five and a half hour, six hours, and landed at eight nine in the morning. And I was like. What the, oh, wait, so the, weird. the what the fuck? <laughs> um, so like I said, jet lag's been absolutely kicking my ass, but it was the best week ever. Like it was so needed. It, it was a break, but it wasn't really like a chill. No, no. So no, no. Um, American TV is mental as well. Like absolutely nuts. Yeah. Watching Let's Make a Deal, Wayne Brady. And there's people dressed as like grapes and fruit bowls and a nurse. And it was just really weird. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> yeah it was so mental dude but best time greatest time so glad I did it uh, me and Noel for dinner Thursday night that was absolutely incredible so I had dinner with Bear in the Big Blue House former guest um, who will hopefully be making a, a return to the show yes. soon um, also talk about his memoirs um, 
Uh, yeah, it's just the greatest week, and I'm just happy to be back now, settling back in, gutted to be going back to work tomorrow. Um, but it is what it is. Um, we've got interviews for the Razor's Edge this week. It's going to be a great week. I've just talked a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nothing to apologize for. You've had an amazing week. It's good to hear what you've been up to. But I appreciate like, that. Like, like you said, I've, I've missed doing this. Like this past week, I've just been like, I want to fucking record something. I've really missed it. So all day I've been like, yes, we're recording tonight. We're recording tonight. I'm yeah, it's, it's... all day, so... What do you guys think of the new revamp? The new revamp, lovely. Uh... Welcome to our revamp. We look all beautiful. Are you voguing? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of voguing. <laughs> but no, I, this this is what I've been doing while you've been away as well. I've just been working on getting all this, making it look sexy. So you people that like to enjoy us on the YouTube, enjoy. I hope you like. Yeah, thank you for subscribing. All you people that have subscribed recently, 176 now, Jane. Ooh, we're going we're climbing yeah we are climbing i like it so i appreciate every single one of you um so you can fly Braden barry release his brand new single marigold last friday so please get that in your ears the brand new album is out at the end of march so you've only got a month left go to stakeoverclothing.com enter that chronicles that little chronicles fucking um discount code we have li- literally like this um and you'll get 10 percent off because this brand new album on vinyl is on stay cozy clothing so go and grab that now while stocks last speaking of that little discount code and all that little spiel you just did there should we hear it from the man himself yeah we should probably let Braden do shouldn't we come on yeah. come on mate come on come on all right. Is this thing on? Well, howdy doody, everybody. This is Braden Barry from Say We Can Fly, founder of Stay Cozy Clothing. Your one-stop shop for the coziest, most fashionable hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Gorge, Mickey. That's right, folks. And we're proud to say that we are now sponsoring... The Chronicles of Podcast. Ouch. Hosted by Tom and Jamie. <laughs> like, you can get 10% off, man. That's right, Shaggy. Just use the special code, the Chronicles at checkout. Oh, boy. So, the greatest advert ever made. That's bloody Lulu. I do want you to get that discount code, the Chronicles in, get your tail side 10% off. Jamie? Yes, sir. So, time for Catlin's Street Chins. <gasps> yeah, it is. Do you want to know something? Callum will be able to tell you. And Callum's treachings. It's cereal soup. Ooh. Your boy is back to preach the nation. So, Jamie, yes. without further ado, what is Callum treaching us? This week. The older you get, the less you care about being cool, which in essence is what being cool is. So, the older you get, the cooler you get. <laughs> <laughs> yes I knew it <laughs> it's quite spot on language these days now when it's like gassed and peak and whatever the fuck the kid whatever, like, so yeah. I, I don't understand like I don't know I think claps one now not clap is it clap I don't know I'm not or, I'm not down with the street kids I don't no am I the things but they like, say are Working with the people I work with, obviously they're all like younger than me, and they do that. And I'm like, I have no fucking clue what you just said. <laughs> um, but that's like, oh, but I'm not down with the kids anymore. But I'm like, but I'm not asked. I don't want to be down. I don't. I don't want to be talking like a fucking moron. Um, so yeah. So in a in a way, it's like, um, we're cool without realizing it. Yeah, it's like the cool kids, are like, yeah, whatever. And then we're just like, yeah, whatever. You're talking bollocks, mate. I don't. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cool by default by being old and grumpy. Yes. It's wonderful. That's a really good a way to look at it, actually. I like it. <laughs> you're it's... not cool, Grandad. I think you'll find I fucking am. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what, though. When I was, uh, funny enough, when I was away, yeah. um, there was a shop. There was like a cane shop, like, you know, with cane, walking sticks, canes. But they yeah. had like devils on top and gargoyles and stuff they could hold on to. As you, as, I, I, I literally went... Those are some cool canes right there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of want a walking cane now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I actually did go. I'm quite tempted. <laughs> but will it actually fuck up how I walk? Probably. But you look like, dip- We have a look like a pimper of Bond villain. So it's fine. Oh, definitely the first one. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yes, God. That'd be so music. cool. <laughs> Remember the names? Like, that's what I, I don't know why. I was really, I just thought, look, suave, I suppose. Oh, good word. 
good one. I'm not a monocle prick. I don't want to become one of them people. <laughs> like, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, but what Brenton told me all about the caviar he had from Lincoln. And I was like, Lincoln, where are you, Jewish? <laughs> so, I mean, so just, uh, you know, again, those really toffee nosed fucking Tory <laughs> conversations that no one has a fucking clue what they're talking about. And everyone's like, oh, he has got a problem. He has got might as well have just had caviar on it switch, you imbecile. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I, don't know. I think that's a good I think that's a good uh, way to that's a good analogy to live by. I like it. Not yeah. being cool without realizing it and not really giving a fuck that we are, but we are. Yeah, because we're cool. Absolutely. Anyway, let us move on. What else is Callum treating us? The... Provided there's a hose nearby, stepping in dog poo is better barefoot than it is in shoes. Yes. Yeah. If you know there's a hose, yeah, because you can wash it straight off. Yeah, this is the thing, right? Like, when people go, oh, you're wearing shorts, it's raining. It's like, yeah, because my legs will just dry. Yeah, your jeans, you're going to stay wet and then... Exactly. Fucking... And there's nothing fucking worse. There's nothing worse than wet socks. Nothing yes. worse. Nothing worse. Than... I mean, there's probably a lot of things worse. It's like dying. But <laughs> wet socks are absolutely <laughs> atrocious. So, um, yeah. So when people are like, oh, I'm really short, so I just fucking push it down. I'm like, yeah, because my legs will dry. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that really tickled me. Well, there is. Like dying. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true, isn't it? No one wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, Callum. Good, I'm pleased. While while you're getting yourself together, um, who's leaving dog shit on the floor? You yeah. naughty, naughty yeah. people. Yeah, I can't stand them. You know, I have a Mac one, a massive fucking shit. Perfect. I'm not gonna pick that up anyway. Who does that? <laughs> but you can talk to that guy. And, what is wrong? <laughs> oh. Why are you not getting your master to pick that up? You should be disgusted with yourself, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if dogs are getting bags going to the toilet, I'll be fucking... Yeah. It'd be amazing. I'm quite kind of worried, <laughs> to be honest. Do you mind, Karen? I'm using the facilities. Woof. I would love it if dogs started using... There's a cat, isn't there, that can use a toilet? Yes, I've seen I that. swear <laughs> I've seen the video, yeah. yeah. Mental. How did you get... Cats are fucking not as clever as dogs, so... I better be careful what I say. All oh, the cat lovers are there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The cat ladies will come after you. <laughs> well, I live with one. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and I know that if I ever said dog shit, I would want it to be Beth. I mean, could you imagine how much it will squelch through your toes as well? Oh. Oh. I think yummy. I want to, I think I want to wear shoes now. As soon as you mention it squelching Why? Toes, I think I want to wear shoes. Well, see, there was a great, there's a great story here, right? So. Uh, years and years and years ago, I had a best friend who doesn't speak to me anymore because his then missus didn't like me and he stopped talking. Whatever, who cares? Anyway, he was a labourer with his dad. His dad's a labourer, and um, he was like, "They're on, a, they're on a, they were building a house, I think, or whatever." And he was like, "Can you smell shit?" And my mate's like, "No, why?" He's like, "Where is my shit? But where the fuck is that coming from? I can't see any." So he's like checking his clothes, his shoes, like looking around. He's like, "This is anyway." Get some of the day. Hour later, I, look, I'm not joking to you, son. I can still smell shit. And he went, yeah, it's because it's under your nose and your top and your moustache there. <laughs> How? So he's obviously wiped his ass or something and then obviously scratched his face. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. He was asking his oh. son this question for an hour. Yeah, he could smell shit. Any sooner? Well, he obviously didn't notice. It was literally right there in his oh. philtrum in his mouth. Uh, Hilarious. That is so funny. Good word, philtrum. Ooh, I like it. But That's what it's called. I don't know. It's from that advert, it's from that advert isn't it? Was it Nestle or Nescafe? I remember that advert, yeah. I think I can't remember what it's for. But it was I like in a massive one tour. And she's like, what's the bit between my mouth and my nose called? And he's like, that's your philtrum, darling. <laughs> you want to go... <laughs> You want to fuck off back to whatever poor school you came from? Literally, it's like she was proper like, "Right, right, proper corner." And he was just like, "Darling, let me tell you right now, it's actually called your filter, okay? Now, do you mind fucking off?" 
thing is, you only ever hear it called your filtrum during when someone wants to spout a random fact or some bollocks. No one yes. ever just calls it your filtrum. Yeah. It's like a bit between your ass and your, go- and your ball sack. What's that called? That's called your gooch. Yeah, it's not your perineum. It's your gooch, mate. Yeah. Is it a perineum, is it? I don't actually know that. Perineum is the correct term, yes. yes. Learning! With Jamie! <laughs> um, to the fucking segment, welcome to Learning with Jamie. I know what the skin by your arsehole's called! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Callum, I definitely want to be barefoot. Definitely, 100%. I did until you said squelching between your toes, and now I want to wear my shoes. I would much rather have it squelched between toes and go, oh, hose, wash, wash, wash. Awesome! Carry on with my day. Clean my shoes. Than... Rub it in some grass or something. Just Yeah, but that's not going to get all of that, is it? Leave the part of the puticles and the, know, the you've destroyed of the me in between the toes. <laughs> 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 Let's move on there, Jamie. And Please. finally... What else is Callum treating us this quick? Being alone in an abandoned building is scary, but thinking you're alone in an abandoned building is even scarier. Is it, though? Hmm. Because I'll be honest, I never, ever think about it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm the opposite. I'm. If I thought I was on my own, I'd be all right. It's the fact that I think there's people that I don't know are there that freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> I remember uh, being a kid and there was a random, I lived on an RAF base back in the day because my dad was in the RAF. And there was a massive, massive fuck off field and a random house in the middle. Just a random house. Fuck and me and my man. friends used to be like, we used to go right up to the door and be like, I, I, I can't go in, I can't go in. Can you go in? <laughs> no, I can't go in. But every day we'd be like, shall we should do it today? I would always get to the door and go, yeah, I can't, I can't do it, I can't go in. <laughs> What if there's someone in there? It's been abandoned for a hundred years, but there might be someone in there. No, <laughs> it's it's like there's. Um, I watched uh, I watched a Daddy episode on the flight. John Oliver, for those people who don't know who I refer to as Daddy, and um, from season six, he talks about psychics, and it, it's fantastic. It's, I highly recommend season six, episode two, to watch. I know there's people that believe in stuff, but he's like. It was great because it's like, oh, there's people that don't believe in it and all that sort of stuff and everything else. I'm not here to tell you it's not, it's not wrong and it's not right or whatever. And he goes, but it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know when they have those detectors, or oh, this detects when there's a presence in the room. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, and then he goes like, oh, I was like, oh, there's somebody here. I reckon there's got to be the cameraman or something behind it goes like, you fucking idiot. I don't know why. I thought you were going to say, it's probably the cameraman by the microphone going, making the machine. All that. All that. But it's like, why can't you tell me what the lottery is going to be then? Why can't you tell me, I, you know, who killed this person? Oh, no, we can't do that. I, oh, yeah, I bet you fucking can't. Did they um, that on a single episode, those Derek Akora type programs, see a ghost? No. No. Oh, I'm sensing something in the room. Yes, it's your bullshit, Derek. Shut the fuck up. Oh, it begins with a K. J M L. There was a again <laughs> from the same episode. He shows this guy in an Irish in an Irish pub, and he's like, "I'm getting a sense of Kevin McCaldrick, uh, McKinney, uh, and he looks like all his Irish names." Everyone's going there, going, "Nope." <laughs> huh? So good. Anyway. Um, that's not. I, I just don't believe in that sort of no, shit. It's not, and that's, that's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. I'm not trying to tarnish the psychic community for people that do believe in it. That's entirely your thing. Um, but it's all bullshit. But so, if you do, then you would have seen that rant coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think I'd be more scared being in the building than I would thinking about it because thinking about it, I know that I'm not there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Or is it a dream sort of scenario? Because if I think about being in an abandoned building on my own, I'm like, yeah, it's scary, but the worst thing would be, because when I watch scary films, I have a tactic that I use, so I ne- I don't jump much anyway. When I know it's a bit coming, you can tell by the music, I always do this. I look down. Yeah. So I look down, but I keep it like I'm still looking at the screen. So it's like I just look down, or look at, and I'll glance quickly to make sure what's going on, I'll look around, I just can look around, <laughs> but I don't, like. I keep my head very still, it's like, yeah. So I'm just going to look around. Am I the weird one that hears that and goes, this is a bit I need to pay attention to? 
What? I need to, like, if I know something scary is happening, instead of looking away, I'm like, I need to pay attention to this bit. This bit is important. So that's Someone's, how you do it. <laughs> Someone's going to die. <laughs> That's how you do yeah. it. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Let me make a note. <laughs> yeah. How to decapitate someone with a horse. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, <laughs> do I like that idea? Me. I wonder how that... Oh, dude. Right. <laughs> and that was another edition of Callum's Treachings. To end on that god-awful joke. <laughs> You've got to live that. You know this is going to be ingrained in the world forever, and you've got to live. You've got to live with that. Yeah, I was always going to say, hopefully, I won't do it too badly, and it'll be in a stable condition. But I went with nay. Dear me. Shall we get to the next section, Jamie? Yeah, sorry. Nothing to apologise for. It's just time for Tom's journal. Yeah. And welcome to another edition of Tom's Journal. <laughs> so, Steve Irwin has you pinned down in a headlock. What cool facts does he tell the audience about you and your habitat? <laughs> I don't care. He calls me a fucking beaut and I really need to hear it. <laughs> as long as he doesn't shove his fam right up my asshole. <laughs> I'm near this crock, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove my thumb right up his ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's ringing in there right now. God, he's angry. Fuck it, he's pissed off. <laughs> so, Jane. Oh, yes. All good? <laughs> yes. We're back, just, guys. Are you, are you enjoying this? I'm just happy you got the reference. <laughs> Things. Only 90s kids will understand, okay? Are you ready for this? I like these ones. Tamagotchis. Pokemon cards. Hmm. Sony Walkmans. The crushing realisation that you're stuck between a generation of people who believe that hard work can accomplish anything and that you should live your dreams, whilst the generation that came immediately after you is living far better by being in the right place at the right time and having the foresight to study in newly developed fields, thus leaving you to tend to your hopeless, demolished expectations and dreams for the future. Hogs. <laughs> I remember all of those <laughs> <laughs> especially that second to last one yeah i bet <laughs> yeah i also remember the anti-skip feature on a discman that did absolutely fuck all i never got a discman i always had walkman um i was never i remember when i bought my first ever phone in year nine it was a motorola brick i never had nokia's i was like yeah i've got my brick with the little tiny rectangular screen so you text, it would just like go off the edge. You had no idea what you said previous, and you had to like click that arrow button, and it only go once at a, once per character. And you're like, they're going, fuck me, here we go. Right, so let's so, say so what I said. The <laughs> pigeon went fucking out to market. <laughs> and I can't be asked to eat. <laughs> like 30 characters. And that yeah, and you had to like, push the button. 10p. Yeah, 10p a letter. 10p. God, those Mental. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, 888 for T. Like, Mom, can I put 10p on my phone, please? Mental <laughs> times, people. Mental <laughs> times. Oh, yeah. Those were the days. But, Jamie. Yes. When you push a pull, when you push a pull door and the person behind you says, you need to pull. Oh, yeah, cheers, lad. Next plan was to start lifting from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so wish I was so quick minded and witty yeah. to come out with these when people say yeah. dumb things. <laughs> I'm the sort of person that thinks of that about 24 hours later while I'm thinking about it again. <laughs> I should have yeah. said that. It's great. Well, you can say it in future. So you just got to remember. Because <laughs> that, that's the problem right there. You've got to remember it. 
And this is very true. Yes. And you have children, four of them to be exact. Yes, and no memory. Right. <laughs> so now we're going to sit here and translate Canadian, okay? Oh, wait. Translated Canadian. No, yeah, is yes. <laughs> yeah, no, is no. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I'm sorry, but unfortunately the answer is yes. No, yeah, no. Oh, no, you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> this is where I'm getting confused now. I was with it at the start, and then if it got on, I was like, ah, I don't understand Canadian. Well, you going to listen to be like, yeah, absolutely. It's quite <laughs> bang on, guys. <laughs> absolutely bang Every on. Every word. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I came back with a cold. I do apologise. No, oh, no. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do an unboxing video with a shovel in the hand as I enter the graveyard. <laughs> the Necromancer channel. <laughs> oh, Jay. Someone hasn't done that. <laughs> I don't even know what a necromancer is. So, um, I went to the doctors. All right, and he just asked me a couple of questions. He's like, Doctor, um, do you exercise? Me? Oh, yeah, I do all of them. The push-offs, the plonks. Doctor, the what? You know, the crunchies. Doctor, okay, I'm going to put no. <laughs> <laughs> the crunchies and the plonks. <laughs> <laughs> How long can you hold a plonk? <laughs> oh, my ride was fucking insane. Some guy would be like, I need to fix my camera so I can get to work. And Exit was like, okay, well, we turned the trunk into a fish tank. <laughs> I honestly, I remember telling one of the kids, it might have been Harrison, about this show. And I actually, until I showed him, I don't think he believed me. <laughs> it was a thing. Really? <laughs> it's just there's there's a UK version thing. as well. Yeah, with Tim Westwood. Oh, oh the uncle Tim. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, I would love. You know, they do like those "Where are they now?" things. I want to pimp my ride version of that show. <laughs> so, where is this car now? Well, it broke down just after I left the garage. And <laughs> Did they put a swimming pool in the back of one car? I swear they did. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? It's so... <laughs> but Americans, like, loved it. To fair, I used to watch it all the fucking time. It was incredible to watch. Oh, not, it was just a bit too mental for my liking. It was just like, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> oh, you like to you like music, so have a DJ set and an amplifier and a guitar and all this in the back. Yeah, and your own DJ everywhere you go. <laughs> Hey, across the river. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't use any of it because you're driving the car. There is literally no point to any of it. It's like the um is it Freddy Got Fingered where he changes his dad's car and he calls it like the Slutmobile or something? Is it Freddy Got Fingered? No, it's not Freddy. It's, it's a Tom Green movie. It's a Tom Green movie where he completely changes the car and his mum has a massive go him about it. Oh, what movie is it? And it comes like this slot mobile, and she's like, I am not driving that. I can't think what film it is. I can't think what film it is. I think I have a look. I swear it's Tom Green. I swear it's Tom Green. Or it might be, no, it might even be a movie. I think it's just this TV show that he did, the Tom uh, Green show. Maybe. I yeah, yeah. Much of that. And he changed his, uh, he got his dad or his mum's car, changed to have <laughs> slot mobile written on the front and on the sides <laughs> and stuff like that. And, that. <laughs> and she's like, you're going to change. I'm not driving that car. <laughs> weird dude um, this was written on a community board on Facebook hi my 12 year old son Dave just lost his drone he was flying it in the knoll uh, on Saturday uh, when it lost signal and flew off in the general direction of Swansea normally we wouldn't be too bothered about it but it turns out he put Rachel my 7 year old daughter's pet hamster in it as a test pilot and she's quite upset Oh, God, could you imagine? <laughs> I don't know what noise came out of my face then, but I only said that. I just didn't expect the fucking hamster. <laughs> I'm going to end on this little number. The following 
are real 999 calls made to the Welsh Ambulance Service in the last year. Okay? Okay. Hi. Um, I'm not sure whether this is an emergency or not, but I'm really worried about my ingrowing toenail. It's kind of getting a bit red. Oh. I fucking they get worse. Like this. They get worse. They get worse. Don't worry. Oh, God. Um, hi there. I've cut my finger by accident. I don't think I've got any plasters. Oh. If there's a headache in here, I'm just committing just, no horrible offence. One more. One more. <sighs> All there. Hi, my keys have gone. Basically, I've gone out and someone's taken my keys or something. I can't find my keys. I just want to get in. Operator, unfortunately, sir, we don't help with keys to open your door. We're able to send you an ambulance. Caller, you are shit. I need to fucking have it at my fucking door, all right? What? Yeah. End. He needs killing. Yep. Um, I've got hair dye in my eye and it hurts. That one, I can kind of get. Because, you know, there's chemicals and dye, and getting that in your eye, that could be dangerous. I will give that a pass. That has a pass. Um, I'm trying to open my house door, but my housemate isn't opening it. It's an emergency because I need to be sick, and I need to go to the toilet. (laughs) (laughs) What, What a moron. And the last one. Hi there. I'm out of inhalers, and I can't last until Monday. That is not a reason to phone the fucking ambulance service. Mm. No wonder they're going on strike. They're just sick of this. Not yeah. to do with pay anymore. They're just sick of idiots. <laughs> I was watching um, an A&E show, After Dark, on Channel 5 last night. And uh, it's based in Hull, so straight away, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it's just literally full of homeless people just wanting to try and like, nick beds and stay there and stuff like that, hurting themselves. And one guy, had, like, he'd ripped his tendons in his finger and she'd bandage it up and then go away to fill out some form and he'd just rip the bandage off and let it bleed everywhere again. Oh, fuck. Yeah, she ended up, like, putting this real magic stuff that like, glues it together to stop it from bleeding, like, clots it all up. So he couldn't keep saying that he's bleeding everywhere. Kind of sad in a way. It's like, sad, yeah. It's it just, you know, you see these people that are in dire need of whatever, but yeah. what they can you say? They have to do extreme it, things like that just to have a roof over their head. Oh, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. The world we live in. The world yeah. we live in. <clears throat> but Jamie, uh, that was the edition of Tom's Journal. And a great edition it was. I enjoyed Thank that you, sir. Much. Thank you. It's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I I know that people can change. Uh, And and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there, guys. We are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing, and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Mr. Stevens. Hiya. It's audience participation time. Let's get to it, bitch. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's Participation Challenge. This week, I said, inspired by Tom's trip to New York, seeing some of the sights and sets of Hollywood classics this week, we ask, what movie or TV set slash location would you like to visit if you could? What say you, Mr. Stevens? Well, when I was away, I saw Home Alone 2. I saw a film in Central Park, the bridge where, she, where he gives the doves to the um, to Piers oh. Morgan. I saw the el- the elf scene uh, with the snowball fight. 
um, I stood on the uh, little round thing in Central Park when Thor takes Loki back to Asgard in the very first Avengers movie at the end. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. So that was that was kind of cool. And I went to Grand Central as well. I you went saw, to Grand Central, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Grand Central and saw the... Um, where the, obviously the fight takes place in there as well and that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, and Avengers Tower was right behind it. So yeah, it's cool. That's so fucking cool. And, oh, I love it. Have you been to any like outside of your trip to New York for adventures? Was any you'd like to go to? Uh, fucking hell. Um, I well, I tried to get to HBO Studios to go see John Oliver's studio, but alas, that wasn't really a tour kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so off the top of my head, not really. Yeah. Um, I've seen the countdown clock. Is that a thing? <laughs> Counts. It was just sat. It was literally just sat on the floor when I went to John Bishop's Bruin. Excuse me, back in 2010, it was just a massive countdown clock, which just sat on the on the on the thing. And I was like, "That's cool." Random place for that to be. That's awesome. Regarding location wise, being I've been to Gloucester Cathedral where they filmed a good chunk of the Harry Potter stuff um, in the first two movies. And also I've been to Harry Potter worlds, a load of the sets and stuff like that there. But where I really want to go to, there's one main place that is Mecca for me. And that is the quick stop in New Jersey where Clerks was filmed, where like it's everything, Kevin Smith related, goes through the quick stop in New Jersey. That I'm desperate to go to. That is that is a bucket list for me to go there. That is the one for me. I really, really, really want to go there. <laughs> but yeah, let's get some audience answers, shall we? Zara Lavender, she says, I've been to the Coronation Street set in Manchester with my mum, which was really good. Really nostalgic, having watched it years ago. Was definitely hungover, though. <laughs> I mean, like, really badly hungover. And I'd like to visit the Call the Midwife set because it's my favourite show. Nice. Fair play. Uh, Becky Westwood with an answer I didn't expect anyone to ever say. Uh, set from Jaws. I can't work out if she wants to go to a quaint fitting fishing village or she just wants to go in the ocean and swim with sharks. I don't even know when I was filmed. No, no, man. I'm going to hope it's the village one, because it'd be a bit weird if she wanted to go swim with sharks. Oh, fair. Yeah. Lisa Clemens, this I'm so jealous of, said the mansion use for the Rocky Horror Picture Show it is such a cool-looking building. Oh, I'd love to go to that. Uh, Jerry O'Keen? Jerry Keen? Very keen, yeah. Yes, I finally got it. <laughs> oh, this again, I'm very, very jealous of. I visited the edge of the Sahara Desert whilst I was in Tunisia, and this is where a young rap scallion named George Lucas filmed some scenes as Tatooine for a little unknown project he was working on called Star Wars. I think it did okay for him. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think, think it did so, all right. Yeah, yeah I, I think I've heard of that little thing. <laughs> Uh, Deborah Harvey, I would love to visit Hobbiton. I've no idea where that part of the movie was constructed, but I know much of it was filmed in New Zealand. I think that's a play. For, I think all Lord of the Rings fans just want to go to New Zealand to find their sets for that. Uh, and Laurie Jean has the exact same answer, pretty much. New Zealand for the Lord of the Rings Shire set on my bucket list. And um, what have we got? What else have we got? Simon Mitchell. Says the Expanse TV show set as it's one of my favourite book series and TV shows based on said books ever. I'll be honest, Mitch, I don't think I've ever heard of the Expanse. It's best. It's based in space. Um, oh, that'd be so a weird it's setting, on Amazon Prime, I think. Oh. It's it's available somewhere. Um, Helen and Jasper absolutely love that show as well. So there we are. I'm assuming you don't want to go to space because the film. Where it was filmed here. <laughs> Matt Rose says Cadacat from Vikings, which is actually fairly doable as it was filmed in Ireland. There you go. Oh, nice. Up on over. Ireland's had loads. Like all of Game of Thrones was filmed in Ireland as well, wasn't it? There's quite a lot you can go there. And last but not least, we didn't get many this week. Ruby Goodwin, she says, a filming location. That I really want to go to the filming location to Father Ted. Oh, wait. I am. My sister brought me tickets for my birthday. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that would be absolutely <laughs> awesome. And she says, I've also been to some of the Jurassic Park locations in Hawaii too. Very pretty. That wow. Fucking awesome too. There's so many. That's cool. Hawaii, man, just, just in general. That's yeah. incredible. I think oh, thank you. That, oh, I was going to say, I think someone said that not far from here, 
is where the mansion they use for Wayne Manor in the Christian Bale Batman movies. So that'd be pretty cool to go to as well. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, if you enjoy James Pan's Mission Challenge, Thomas Journal, Karen's Preachings, all the stuff we talked about at the beginning on the interview, then you enjoy the other 74 editions of the Chronicles of Podcasts wherever you get your podcasts from, whether it be Spotify, Google, Apple, etc. We're also on YouTube at the Chronicles of Podcasts. Make sure you hit that bell, uh, hit the subscribe button, and comment as much as you like. It'd be grand. Thank you so much. You can find all our Way About Lenses on there. You can find all of our Bloodstock interviews on there and our vlogs of Dublin Crest and of Bloodstock. Dublin Crust has just been announced that it's going to be in the cinemas this year. So make sure you go out and watch that little bad boy. It's fucking incredible. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you can also find us on the Facebook at the Chronicles of Podcast. Make sure you like that. Give us a little, uh, give us a little share. That'd be grand. Jamie, where can you find us? Oh, where can we find us? We can find us going on to Spotify and subscribing to Beyond Extinction and waiting for that nothing more wretched EP to come out very, very soon. You could definitely do that and find us on the Swiss app at TCO Pod. Jamie, as well as doing that, where else could you find us? You could find yourself sitting there listening to Tom go on about the fact that he was in New York. Did you know he was in New York last week? I bet he didn't. Abs- he no idea. Absolutely. <laughs> Our on the Instagram at TCO Pod. You can also find us on TikTok at TCO Pod, LinkedIn at the Chronicles of Podcasts, or our website at www.thechroniclesofpodcast.com. Uh, we're everywhere, guys. Just fucking subscribe, all right? Just do it. Just like listen to me. Just listen to what I'm saying and go out and do it. It would be very, very much appreciated. It really, really would. Shall we say thank you to a few of our friends? Go for first, it. First off, let's say thank you to the man who provides every single piece of music you hear on this show, Mr. Singer Songwriter Matt Roberts. Go check him out on all the social medias at Matt Roberts Music. Make sure you're following him on on the old Spotify and wherever you get your music from, ready for new music to be dropped very, very soon. And of course, we heard from him earlier, Mr. Stay Cozy Clothing himself, Braden Barry. Head on over to www.staycozyclothing.com. Add whatever you like the look of to your basket, including that sexy little t-shirt cap combo that Mr. Stevens has got going there. And of course, the Sophie Lancaster Foundation collaborative t-shirt. Add those to your basket and whatever else you'd like the look of. Add that discount code, The Chronicles, and get yourself 10% off your order. A little gift from these guys to you. And last but not least, it is, of course, the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, stamping out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. We spread that message every single week because it means the world to us, that people be treated with respect, with decency, and just allowed to be who they are. No matter what they are, whether they are alternative or not, you should be feel free and feel safe to be yourself in this world. Since we last spoke, an absolute another goddamn tragedy in this world has happened because someone wanted to be themselves. Where a beautiful 16-year-old girl, Brianna J, her life was taken from her simply because she was trans. That is literally it. Because she was being herself, she was feeling free to be herself in this world, and she was punished for that. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the fact that it's still happening today, it baffles my mind. I literally cannot wrap my head around the fact that this happens in this world. But head on over to sophielancasterfoundation.com, click on hate crime, and there is a questionnaire that I want you all to fill in. If you have ever been treated differently because of the way you dress, the music you listen to, the way you act, however you express yourself, we need this information because it is a hate crime. No matter how you put over bells and whistles you put on it, if you're treated differently because you are from the alternative subculture, it is a hate crime, and we need as much evidence as we can to show to the courts to prove this. Like I said, the fact people are being treated differently for wanting to be who they are in 2023 is absolutely disgusting and ridiculous. And, you know, we need justice for people like Sophie, for people like Brianna. So please help us share that message. Good friend of a show, Mally Malpass, has done an amazing thing in light of what's happened to Brianna. If you go over to social media pages, he's set up a little merch little merch page and every single bit of merch he sells now 100% of his profits are going to mermaids which is an amazing charity set up to protect trans kids please if you have a couple of pennies support the sophie lancaster foundation support mally and what he's doing for mermaids it would mean the absolute world to us and we cannot wait to see what we are doing with these guys in 2023 so please help us spread that message of equality and being together because we we're all the fucking same at the end of the day <sighs> i got very passionate 
I don't know, I like it. Thank you to this handsome devil over here who I've missed so much. And thank you to you too, my friend. It's been glorious. Another another decent episode sl- smashed in that bag there. That's how we get it in. Is that how you smash it into a bag? Is that how you... Uh... Prominently in like a sleeping bag. Oh, okay. Mm. You went sideways first. So I thought you were like, trying to punch someone in the face. I'm trying to keep in the camera angle. <laughs> oh, okay, fair. No, that's fair enough. Um, Jamie, another glorious episode, sir. Another glorious episode indeed, my friend. Wonderful. Beyond Extension, thank you, boys, so much for coming on the show. We absolutely love talking to you. And a big thank you to Jasmine again for setting the interview up. Uh, but as, uh, Jamie, as for this week right here, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>